Previously on Sailing La Vida Gypsy, we said goodbye to the beautiful country of Mexico and began making our way down south to Costa Rica. This week... Things are getting intense again. Aboard La Vida Gypsy. This freaking sucks. Hey guys, I'm on my night shift. I don't want to be too loud because I don't want to wake her up. But oh my gosh, this is the most poopiest night shift that I've had in a long time. We are hitting some 2.2 meters of waves. That's six to eight feet of wave action head on. It was so bad that Kurt had to wake up just now and uh, bring the mainsail down. We usually have the mainsail up so that if the wind ever picks up, it's easy for us to just pull the motors back and just sail. But the rigging was so loud and it was basically like, help me, help me. This isn't good for my longevity. I feel so sick. And it doesn't look like it's gonna get any better the next couple of days. So, Costa Rica, ay ay ay. Guys, it's gotten a little crazy this morning. I haven't even really woken up. It's still dark, the sun's just coming up, but uh, the wind's picked up from doing nothing. We actually had the motors on to uh, gusting over 20s. So I put a reef in and uh, got the sails going. We're uh, close hauled and we are moving. So uh, the waves are picking up, the sea state's picking up. It's gonna be a rough morning. Linda is still trying to sleep right now. I'm hoping that uh, the waves are rocking her to sleep, but I have a feeling that the pounding is probably uh, waking her up. We found a huge consequence of being rushed out of the marina yesterday. We did not do our checklist of making sure what well, we thought we did, uh, but I guess not good enough of making sure that all the hatches are closed and the front bedroom, the window was, I guess, partially opened. And with all the wind and waves last night crashing through, they open the window and now everything is soaking wet. The mattress is wet, the cushions are wet, the room is wet, there's water dripping from the ceiling and that whole side of the boat is now covered in water as well, which is very, very dangerous. But now it's just a matter of figuring out how to dry all this stuff. Today has been a day of highs and lows, like figuratively and literally this wave action has been not bueno. 24 hours of this crap, I'm pretty much over it. But two hours away from our next little flag thing, we're gonna take down Guatemala and put up El Salvador. So that's good. And I was a smart girl and I prepared some chili for this passage. So I'm not gonna have to be in the galley for too long. I'm just gonna heat up some chili, put it in a bowl, throw some cheese, give some saltine crackers up on that. It's gonna be a nice hearty meal. That ain't cheddar cheese. No, it's some sort of Mexican cheese. We gotta eat what's in the fridge, man. This is homemade chili with saltine crackers, saladitas. Bon appetit, here. So I'm sleeping in the bedroom and I hear a loud pop and I look around all of, you know, our dressers and everything are open. We didn't push these buttons because yeah, we go fast sometimes. We can push some 12 knots, but 
it's not so crazy and it's usually downwind, so it's no problem. But we're going upwind and I look over here outside and it turns out, one second. God, I hope I don't get splashed. What you are seeing out there is the hatch for our life raft. So that rope popped because of the force of the waves. I'm actually gonna close this because waves may come in here and then we're gonna have bigger problems again. So the wave action broke, broke that rope free. And if that other rope breaks free, everything is going to go to the sea without us. And that is not the plan. So now Kurt has to think of a way to fix this, we might have to uh, heave to here or stop the boat uh, if the waves calm down and figure out something. Please excuse the creaking sounds. We do have a reef in because it's been banana sandwich up in here. So that's the sound you hear. But uh, Kurt is over here doing some strange things with some lines and I'm curious as to what his plans are for fixing this problem. What are you doing over there? Setting up some ropes so I can go swim off the bow of the boat. And then if I need to let go, then I got a rope to catch back here. I'm gonna use the safety buoy, use it kind of as an inner tube and sit in and uh, see if I can get high enough. If that doesn't work, then I'm gonna have to inflate the paddle board and do it from the paddle board, which is gonna be a pain in the butt. You're my hero. You're like uh, Clark Kent. You look like a dork, but you're really Superman on the inside. <laughs> The, the paddle board if I'm gonna get it done. I really don't want to put the paddle board in the water. It's gonna be a pain to get out, but that's the only way it's possible to get it done. It probably still won't work. Plan B. You're asking why we're not dropping the dinghy to do this. <laughs> that would be plan C, but uh, I really don't want to drop the dinghy because there's always a possibility you can't get it back up. That would be disastrous. Whereas if I can't get the paddle board back up, that's a lot less disaster. Yeah, but you use my paddle board. I just grabbed the first one I saw. Uh-huh, likely story. It oh. better come back up. Looks like you got it. Did you get it? Well, it's in there. Better than it was or whatever, but uh, I didn't get it all the way in. It's missing a washer, so once we get to a little place where we can anchor, I've got to take it out, add washer, and then get it in there good. Okay guys, I'm being a little cautious tonight, but I am running dark right now. I've got a boat that's on the radar. It was about, it was heading right for me, so I took a wide berth around him to try to keep him a couple miles away, and then I shut off all my running lights, shut off all the interior lights so that I'm running dark, and um, he's running dark as well. It's not on AIS, I can't see any lights, so I don't know who, what he is. He's probably just a fisherman, maybe he's tending long lines, so I wanna stay away from him anyways, because I don't wanna get caught up in any lines. But uh, you never know. I'm in Nicaraguan waters and you never know. Sometimes these fishermen get a little bit uh, opportunistic and, uh, and you know they may try to come up on me. Maybe they just want some water. I'm not sure, but I don't want to deal with them at midnight while Linda's sleeping. So I'm running dark and I'm going to try to keep myself very stealth so that I don't get seen. Woke up to the screeching sound of a fishing line, thinking that I was waking up to a 
amazing start to our day, and <laughs> you have confirmed that you've caught four fish, but they've all been bonitos. So they're biting this morning, but they're not exactly what we want. So lures are up. We're moving a little bit forward, having some breakfast. And then you're gonna throw those lines out again. And then, whoop, and then you're gonna catch me a fish, yes? Well, we'll see. There's my man catching a fish, trying to be a provider. And here I am, like that meme, just sipping my tea, saying, it's probably just another Benito. <laughs> it's a Benito? I think so. Ah, uh, see? The meme lives. Whoa! We forgot this morning to put the Nicaragua flag up. And Nicaragua reminded us we are in Papagayo territory right now. The wind's just kicked up pretty fast. Kurt was like, oh, finally some wind. Let's uh, get the sails out. We were cruising and now we are at 25 knots and it looks like it's sustaining. We have a reef in and uh, captains just decided to put in another reef because these, these winds can get pretty crazy pretty fast. So better safe than sorry. Times like these, we do not mess around. We've got our uh, life jackets always ready to go. We've also got some lines. And Kurt, again, being a good captain, you're the best. Put some jack lines out. I think it's what they're called. I don't know, safety lines. So they go from the bow to the back and you get this and hook it in and then you can move back and forth, whatever happens. We haven't had anything crazy happen yet, but we're ready. Put that reef in quick. <laughs> Now we've entered Papagayo country. We are in Nicaragua and the winds have picked up and I do not expect them to settle down until we get to Costa Rica. We're, uh, we're already in the 27 to 30 knot range and we're not even in the, uh, the, the worst of it uh, spot. Uh, as we get further south, they're supposed to get a little stronger. Right now, everything's smooth. We got a reef in the, the main and a reef in the head sail and the uh, sea state is okay. It hasn't built up too much. So we're just getting sprayed a little bit, a little bit of water across the bow, but that's all right. We're a big boat. We sit up high, so everything's all good. I think we'll be good uh, as long as we don't get, you know, much above 40 or so, we should be fine. So we've got a little extra room to, uh, to, to grow. I'm all right. Usually when it's crazy, bumpy and rolly, I don't like to be in here because it gets crazy, but it's very strange right now because the sea state is not bad, it's just the wind. So actually being in here is a lot more calm than being out there with the noise and the loud and the waves bashing and drenching us. However, because we've got, you know, 30 plus knots and stuff, this is a two man and woman uh, type of thing. So I need to be ready and on deck to help Kurt out. It's our first time dealing with this stuff. Even after the 20th time dealing with this stuff, I think we're we're a good team and we support each other and just having each other around, knowing that the other person is readily available if anything happens, always gives you that sense of security. So if you're my students and you're watching this episode, I'm sorry that I've canceled pretty much all of my classes or rescheduled today, but it's, it's not gonna happen, guys. I need to be alive in order to educate you, so. <laughs> offshore kind of like that one foot off the beach approach because even if the wind is crazy we're not going to get as much fetch when we're closer 
to land. I see the land, which is nice, but we're not close enough. So here we go. Let's try to see if we can get over there. Woo! We did it. We did it. We made it. Well, we made it to the shoreline. Yeah. We're in a much better spot now. Now we're uh, just like a mile and a half offshore. I can get into shore quickly if we're needed. But uh, right now we turn and we're just uh, going parallel to the shore at this mile and a half mark. We uh, have two reefs in the head sail, two reefs in the main sail. And even so, we're going nine knots right now. Um, and I think that we'll be able to ride in this configuration for quite some time, maybe all the way through the night, we'll see. But uh, we might have to um, pull the head sail in or put a third reef in the main if it gets much worse overnight. I'm waiting for the internet to come back on so that I can find a place to hide, an anchorage somewhere. I'm looking on Google Earth and on our Panama Posse good nautical maps to see if it does get crazy where we can tuck and hide into. It's always good to have a plan B. This guy, he's the overachiever. and check and make sure nothing's broken or leaking again because we are getting pummeled. Everything seems to be fine down here, but like I said, our lights are just turning on and off. Oh God, all my orange juices, my storage provisioning is busted. Oh, this light won't turn off. Oh, there it goes. Freaking elbow. Okay, I'm gonna go check the other room now. Everything looks good. We're not sinking. It sounds like we're gonna sink every time a big wave comes. It's just, ugh. Ah, oh, it's rough. <laughs> I've been spending the day getting soaked, sprayed. We've had so much water come over this boat, but I haven't really worried about it because I've had the warmth of the sun, so I didn't mind getting wet. It was it was kind of refreshing. But now that the sun's going down and it's getting chillier, I went full bowlies. So uh, I've got my hood here. I've got uh, a little something to keep my nose warm. So if it gets crazy again this evening, I'm ready. And if I'm it doesn't ready. get crazy for any reason, at least you know you look cool. You look like a ninja. There you go. <laughs> and for tonight's wonderful five-star dinner, we weren't even gonna make dinner, but I figured he needed the energy. He's still got some cough in him. He's still sick, so. Good the ramen. Fashion. The ramen's blowing away. Real. <laughs> 
<laughs> bon appetit, you're the best captain ever. One o'clock in the morning, I took an hour nap, her took an hour nap. It was pretty brutal all around, but we are finally pulling into our anchorage and I could not be happier. So tired right now. It's not ideal that we are getting here at this time. Um, never a good idea to get to an anchorage you've never been to in a country you've never been to at nighttime, but we're not gonna float around in this. The Papagayos are still very much active. This is just a very protected bay. So we've got almost a full moon and I've got my red light and we're gonna use that and cross our fingers that we draw this anchor and then we're gonna go to bed immediately. Oh, oh my God, I'm so tired. Costa Rica, we made it. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. It looks like a bomb went off in this boat after all the banging and beating that we did upwind. Everything fell. We have a few items broken, I think. So we're going to go to bed and then uh, show you the, uh, the carnage tomorrow morning and then get it all picked up. But right now we need some rest. It's been a, a long one. Well, that was quite a sail. That was our longest sail to date, and that was also our toughest sail to date. It tested me. Yeah, yeah, but she did great. Every, oh. Both of us, we, we, yeah, we stepped up to the challenge, and we uh, we managed to get through that sail without anything. And and most of all, the boat did great. Nothing broke on the boat, and we uh, we gave it a good push. My least favorite part was when we were getting pummeled by the waves, and the waves were getting over the boat, and things were breaking, and there wasn't much we can do, but it was also my most favorite part because you looked like a boss. Like he was like holding on to the helm and the winds are coming on him. And he's like, I'm giving it all she's got. And I was like, wow, this guy's a good captain. So but we're not out of the woods yet. <laughs> Stick with us next week because we may have an even tougher sail coming up. We've got to, we still have to get that. around the corner to, uh, to check into this country. And we've got more winds ahead of us. Yep, don't miss out on that. So if it's your first time here, make sure that you guys hit subscribe. Um, if you've been here before, subscribe anyway. Patrons, you put way too much wind in our sails this time around, but we really appreciate the love and support. But thank you so much for everything. And that's it. We'll see you guys next week. See you next week.